tonight. I have a little word of exhortation. And we know. That's the title. And we know. Three words. And we know. Romans chapter 8. Paul's letter to the Romans. Chapter 8, we're going to begin at verse 28. Very common, popular scripture, but I think we're going to get something out of it tonight that you probably have never thought about before. Romans 8, verse 28, I read from the King James tonight, standing in honor of the reading of God's Word. And we know... Oh, hey, there's the title of my message right there. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And we know. Master, we thank you, God, tonight. For your word, we ask, Lord, now that the anointing, the presence of God would rest upon your messenger. Help us, God, to deliver this simple word of exhortation that you've placed in my spirit for this time. Lord, let it reach out through space and time to those that would hear it by internet, Lord, those that would hear it by tape. God, let your word perform a miraculous work this hour. Break the bonds, God. Break the yoke, we pray. Set people free, Lord, that are captive this hour to tradition and man-made thought and man-made doctrine and man-made dogma. Lord, today allow your word to go forth as a liberating force, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. God, by your spirit this moment, do a mighty work, for we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise God and amen. You may be seated tonight. You know, Paul is probably the one person in all of Christendom, in early Christendom, who helps us to realize that faith is a journey that begins in faith, but it actually, before you meet your end and before you reach your grave, you should have found a place of knowledge. You should have come to a place where really you're not just believing anymore, but you know. Amen. I love when people get up to testify, the old timers. I love to see old, old apostolic folk. And when Tommy and I visited that church in South Dallas, 
And it was just so beautiful to see the old timers get up and say, I've been in this way a long time, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and I know that it's the way. Amen. I know that I'm in the right way, glory to God. I know that God is real. I know that my salvation is secure. I know that I've done all that God has asked of me. And I know that God can be counted on to do everything that He ever said He'd do for me. And I know, because it goes past merely believing, and at some point in your journey and at some point in your relationship with God, <laughs> faith becomes knowledge. The Apostle Paul told us that when he said, For I know whom I have believed in, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him, against that day. Paul said, For I know! Amen. Amen. I know. I don't just believe. I know. I don't just believe in God. I know God. I don't just believe God's a healer. I know God's a healer. Honey, I've been healed too many times not to know. I've heard too many testimonies, and unlike some of some people get their names honestly, although it might be a derivative of the name, but I'm not a doubting Thomas. <laughs> Somebody gets up. My grandfather used to tell the same stories over and 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 over again about how God touched him on different occasions when he should have been dead or when he should have been out of work for months and he had a family to feed and he couldn't afford to be out of work. And my grandfather had a lot of faults, but I'll tell you one thing, going to work to make sure he could feed his family wasn't one of them. And he would tell the stories of how he swung that axe and the axe head got off loose from the axe and went right through his knee. And how he had gone to the shop doctor and they said, uh-oh, you're going to be out of work for a few months because you've really messed yourself up here, Don. And that night he asked Royal Murdoch, his neighbor, Royal, would you mind driving me, because he couldn't drive himself, said, would you mind driving me over to see Brother Tatlock? So they went over to Brother Tatlock. It was about 8 o'clock, and of course that was their tea and cookie time. Every night they had a ritual that they... They had their little tea and cookies, you know. So Brother Tatlock said, well, Brother Bell, come on in and set a spell. He said, sure, you want to have some tea with us? And so Grandpa explained what had happened, and there he sat with his knee all bandaged tight, couldn't even bend it because it was bandaged so tight. And he said, there he sat with his knee extended out, Brother Tatlock's sitting over here. They're talking about whatever. All of a sudden, Brother Tatlock reaches over, touches Grandpa's knee, and said a little prayer. God touches man. He's got a family to support. He can't be out of work. Heal him in Jesus' name. That's all it was. And Grandpa went to work the next morning and said, I'm ready to report for work. He said, I'm all better. And the shop doctor said, oh, I doubt that. He <laughs> said, I don't think so. Grandpa says, well, take the bandage off and take a look. So he did. And there my grandfather was with a knee that just the day earlier had had an accent through it, perfectly whole and healed. Shop doctor about passed out. He says, wait a minute, i got to show this. To so he calls in the nurse, you got to see this. You, you remember Don coming yesterday? You remember Don coming yesterday? You, you remember what his knee looked like? Look at this. So you see, Tommy, you can doubt it, this guy over here can doubt it, that guy over there can doubt it, till the cows come home. I know. I know. I know. I've seen so many miracles in my life, I can't even begin to count them. 
sometimes I want to share things that God's done, and I'll tend to say the same ones because I, I can't remember the details of all the others sometimes. But I've seen God do so many things. So I know that God's a healer. I've had people bring their little babies up to me for prayer, like that couple in my first church. Brad and Sue was their names. And they had a little baby born with PKU. I'm not going to go through the whole story. PKU is a condition that doesn't allow uh, an individual to process calcium properly. And what will happen is if they do not eat an extremely limited diet where calcium is concerned, they develop huge knots on their joints. Calcium buildups will build up on every one of their joints. You'll see these big knots under their skin and making it impossible for them to bend their extremities and move their fingers, and it can be debilitating. So they have to put the child on an extremely stringent diet. Kid can't touch so many things that poor baby couldn't even touch, couldn't even look at. If, there's a, if there was a hint of calcium in it, they couldn't have it. Cheese, milk, you know, dairy, all of that. And they come up to me and said, Brother Morrow, and the mother was in tears, and she said, you know, we don't want this baby to have to live like this. She said, we're just, you know, we would like God to heal it. I said, well, God will heal it. And we anointed that baby with oil right here in front of the church. Took my oil, and I anointed that baby, laid hands on it, prayed for it. And then I'm the one that took Sue to the doctor about a week or two later. And they had to do more tests on the baby. I'm the one that took her back the following week after that. I'm the man that was sitting there right next to Sue with that baby in her arms when the doctor came out and said, I have no idea what happened. I cannot even begin to explain it. It must have been a mistake at the lab. It must have been a goof up on somebody's part because this baby don't have PKU. There's no way this baby has PKU. All his tests came back absolutely perfect. And there's no way a baby with PKU could do it. So we, we, we got to check this out. And that mother just started to cry and said, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just to cry. Thank you, Jesus. She said, The Lord healed my baby. God healed my baby. So you said, Well, there are people out there today that are struggling with trying to believe some things. I'm telling you, I've gotten past trying to believe it. I know. Amen. Paul said, For I know whom I have believed. And them persuaded. That means that Tommy, there was no room for doubt in his mind anymore. Said, so now you you can you can try to debate with me, you can try to argue with me all you want to. You know what? I am persuaded. I know where my convictions lie. I know what I believe. I know whom I serve. And Paul is writing to the Romans in Romans chapter eight, and he says, and we know. See, a lot of times we read this verse and we tend to read the second part of it. All things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are the called according to his purpose. But we fail to read the first three verses. Paul said, and we know, hallelujah, and we know as children of God tonight, mother, we know that all things work together for good. As children of God tonight, even those who have been displaced from their homes in Louisiana and Mississippi and Alabama, we know tonight, hallelujah, that God is going to take care of us, that all things work together for good to them that are the called according to his purpose. We know this. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And if you don't know that, you need to pray through and get saved. Because when you've got something with God, then you will move beyond the realms of believing. Oh, Lord, I'm trying to believe that all things. Paul didn't say we're trying to believe that all things work together. He said, and we know that all things 
<laughs> work together for good. To them that love God, to them which are the called in Christ Jesus. Amen. And we know. I'll tell you, if there's anything that I enjoy, you know, I stop at restaurants and talk to people who look like they might be good old time Jesus name people. Because there is a brotherhood that reaches out. There is a kinship that goes out. You can identify with people who come from this way. Because those of us that are in this way know what we're talking about. We're not struggling to believe something. We know, hallelujah. Let me tell you, honey, if you have sat under this preacher preaching a message on Jesus' name baptism and you still question whether or not it is an absolute necessity that it is something God himself ordained for humanity, then you've got a problem. Paul said, I'm persuaded. I know. You see, the bottom line, Mother, is the evidence is there. See, you can only be persuaded of something if the evidence is there. Oh, but wait a minute. Brother, I thought this was supposed to be a walk by faith. I got a kick out of Mark Lowry on TV the other day. So, well, you know, we Baptists, we got to walk by faith. Yeah, you Pentecostals have miracles and all kinds of stuff. So, well, we Baptists, we just have to walk by faith. But Mr. Lowry, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. Faith proves what is invisible. Faith is the evidence of that which cannot be seen by the naked eye. It's the evidence. What did I say a few minutes ago? I said, to be convinced or persuaded, you've got to have evidence. Well, faith is that evidence. See, when you begin to walk in faith, all of a sudden the evidence begins to crop up and pop up all around you. I remember as a kid growing up in the Pentecostal church, I remember Ruth E. Sebastiano jumping into a swimming hole and breaking her neck. I remember her being in the hospital for a long time. And the doctor said, you'll never walk again. You've broken your neck. You'll be crippled from the chest down. And Ruthie, bless her heart, said, you don't know my God. She said, I'll walk again. I will walk again. You better believe. And this one, God forgive me, I'm not trying to put down Christopher Reeves, but this wasn't the empty words of Christopher Reeves who died without ever having walked again. No, sir. Ruth, Ruthie Sebastiano did like I did. And she said, now set me up and put my legs on the floor. You don't walk laying down. Put my legs on the floor. Give me something I can lean on, and let's get started. And in Jesus' name, she began to say, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to walk. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to walk. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to walk. And let me tell you, that girl walked, honey. I watched her walk down to the applause of a church full of people, down the center aisle of that church. Don't tell me what God can do. Don't tell me what God can do, for I am persuaded tonight. I've seen the evidence of what faith can do. God doesn't force it on people, but he does it for people who are willing to act in faith. See, we got people in the world who want to turn everything around and make it backwards. When God does it, I'll believe it. Well, when you believe it, God will do it. Amen. When you believe it, God will do it. That's how faith works. And sometimes it makes me laugh. I see people come to our little church and, you know, they can't find the faith to believe God to fill it up with people. 
I've got faith to believe God to fill it up with people or else I wouldn't keep going month after month, year after year the way I do. But I'll tell you, it makes me laugh how people can get so discouraged and so despondent. And they've been doing this for three years and I've been doing this for 13. I've gone from city to city and left feeling like a failure and a flop because I couldn't establish a, a, you know, a healthy congregation there that could support itself. And yet still I keep going and I got people, well, I don't know how you do it because I'll tell you, I just, you know, it gets discouraging for me. Amen, 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 amen. Why aren't I seeing the evidence? I'll tell you why you're not seeing the evidence, because you're not exercising any faith. The evidence don't come before the faith. The evidence comes after the faith. Amen. you gotta, you got to believe first. Well, how am I supposed to believe? It's easy. You keep going and you say to yourself and you say to God, God, I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know when you're going to do it. I don't know why you're going to do it, where you're going to do it, blah, 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 blah. But... I believe you're going to do it because you said you'd do it. I don't believe you're going to let Charles stand up there for year after year after year and, and have this thing response. Somewhere along the line, Lord, I believe that you are going to cause something to happen. That's how you do it. It's that easy. Exercise a little bit of faith. Take God at his word. Say, well, what, what am I taking God at his word for? The Bible said... They that reap, excuse me, they that sow sparingly will reap sparingly. And they that sow liberally shall reap liberally. The Bible says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. So what you could do is take God at his word, and you could say, Lord, We've been here sowing and 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 sowing. And I believe you're not a liar. I believe you say what you mean and you mean what you say. And I believe that the day of harvest is nearing. I believe we're going to reap that you don't have us out there sowing in vain. That's how you take God at his word. That's how you approach the Lord with faith. So that in spite of whatever you may see, you still have something to stand on. And it comes right from here. You're not standing on whether or not Emily's here. You're not standing on whether or not this one's here or that one's here. You're not standing on whether Laura decided to have a hissy fit and go off and do something. No, you're standing on the Word of God because, honey, i got news for you. You can't count on Laura. You can't count on Emily. You can't count on nobody but Jesus. So the only one you can count on has made his promises in this book, so this is what you need to stand on. <clears throat> Amen. Paul said, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. We know. This is an established fact in the mind of every believer. This is an established fact. And then Paul went on to talk about the fact that God knew who we were before we were even born. For It says, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. Do you know what that means? I know there's a lot of churches preach predestination and I don't think they quite get the principle right. Well, let me help you to get it. It's real easy. God knew exactly which people would wind up making a choice for him one day and he knew which would never make a choice for him will live like the devil every day of their life and never give a, a care about God. But when he knew when you were born, and he knew that Donna one day would make this decision to serve the Lord, the Bible said, them also he did predestinate, meaning he laid out the path in front of you to help you get to where you were going. 
Uh, Dorothy has said many times, like the song they sing, God knew me before I knew him, and yet he loved me. Before she was ever converted, before she ever received the Holy Ghost, she said, as I look back on my life, I see the hand of God. Why? Because those he foreknew, he also did predestinate. Those he knew would one day make that decision, he also was laying out a path in front of you to help you get to where you were going. Amen. Even before you knew that you were going to make that decision, even before you knew that you were going to make that choice, God already was laying the brick down in front of you so that you could have a smooth trail leading you to the way of salvation. Amen. Isn't that glorious? And Paul is saying here in Romans chapter 8, this being true, if, it's, if God went to all the trouble, knowing that we one day would make this choice, if God went to all the trouble of making the path a straight for us so that we could find this glorious way, he goes on to say then, what are we going to say then? If God be for us, who can be against us? Mother, if God was working for us before we even made the decision to serve him, then good God in heaven, surely, surely there isn't anybody or anything that can be against us. Amen. If God be for us, who can be against us? I've got news for you. A lot of people's worst enemies are themselves. And I've got news for you folks out there who are beating yourself up who cannot allow yourself to believe, to obey this gospel, and to serve the Lord. I've got news for you today. If God be for us, who can be against us? Even you cannot be against yourself uh, sufficient enough to stand in God's way. God will knock you out of the way to get at you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You will not even be able to prevent the Lord from reaching you with his long arm of love and grace. Glory to God. Paul goes on to say, verse 34, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. <clears throat> Paul says, Who in the world thinks? Who thinks they can lay a charge against God's elect? Who thinks they have a right to bring any accusation against one of God's people? Who in the world believes that they are justified? When the one who died and rose again is working for us and never against us. There are churches out there today that are working against our ministry. And you know what? That's all right, because if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. They can work against us all they want to. The reality is God is not working against us. He's working for us. And then Paul in his latter portion of this writing says, Who shall separate us from the love of God or the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? A lot of people in the last week or two have realized a lot of these things. But the good news is there's none of these things that can separate you from the love of Christ. That hurricane can knock you out of your house, but it cannot knock you out of the kingdom of God. Amen. That hurricane might be able to drown your car, but it cannot drown the love God has for you. That hurricane might be able to displace you, but my friends, it has no power over your eternal soul, which is safely in the hand of God Almighty. Amen. <laughs> Who shall separate us from the love of God? None of these things can separate us. Listen, Paul says in verse 38, For I am what? Persuaded. Here we go again with that persuaded. I am persuaded. I've seen enough evidence. So that I don't just believe it, I have a conviction, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, 
nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. For those of my friends in the GLBT communities tonight, I would say this, honey, Paul said, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, you have no power over any of those things. Amen. You have no power over the day you're going to die. You have no power over the day you're born. You haven't got any control. You haven't got any say. You don't even have any input. And Paul says, these things will not separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want you to know who you are cannot separate you from the love of God. Who you are cannot stand as a barrier between you and God. Who you are as a human being cannot separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. If life, nor death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, if none of those things can separate you from the love of God, then you better know today that who you are is nowhere near big enough an obstacle to separate you from the love of God. Amen. My goal, my desire, my aim, my prayer tonight is simply this, that I would have a ministry that would help people to realize this wonderful way in such a reality that Eventually, they trade in the old phrase, well, and we believe. I love, I love to hear people talk, especially new converts. Well, in our church, we believe that God will save you if you'll obey this plan of salvation. And we believe that God's the healer. And we believe that God can deliver. And why are they saying we believe because they've never seen it? So they're taking it by faith. They're saying, we believe. But you know what, Lord? I want to raise up a church of folks that say, and we know. And we know. And we know all things work together for good. No, we don't believe it. We know it. And we know. Would you stand with me tonight? Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. Amen. There's an old song that used to say, And I know, yes, I know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. And we know, yes, we know, Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. Praise God, amen. Master, we thank you tonight, Lord Jesus, for this service. We thank you for this time. In your presence, we ask God today that every word that's been spoken would somehow find a place in our hearts. God, help us to be a people of knowledge, not just a people of faith, not just a people who are trying to believe, but a people who know. Lord, people that don't believe in you, people who know you. Master, in the name of Jesus today, help your word, God, to bring forth fruit unto righteousness in the lives of the hearers. Help us, God, to walk in this way in knowledge. Help us to walk in this way with conviction. Help us, God, to be persuaded by the evidence that this is the true way. And we ask it tonight in none other than the lovely, wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you tonight in Jesus' name. You're just